you ever wondered if you could change your life around, do it in a way that's sensible? That's what we'll talk about today. Today we're going to talk about the book, The Great Money Reset, Change Your Work, Change Your Wealth, Change Your Life by Jill Schlesinger. What I loved about this book and I love about Jill in general is that she has this good ability to do what she calls back of the envelope estimates. She has a podcast, which I listen to very dedicatedly. It has helped me a lot. She is one of these people where people will ask questions and sometimes it's just retirement questions, but other times it is, can I change my life? Can I sell my house and move to Italy? Can I take this new job? Can I quit right now? And she just has such a great perspective of how to get these things done. But here's the deep, dark secret. I wrote her podcast twice. The first time was try to figure out how I could do better with my retirement. I finally worked my way up using small steps to max out my 401k. The next step is what do I do next? I am behind. I don't have enough money for my retirement. What can I do? So she gave me some great advice. I started doing that as well. But here's my deep, dark secret. When I was trying to figure out whether or not I should go for this new job, I went on her show and talked about this situation. What if you had a job where you would make less money, but you would have a retirement plan that would fix retirement entirely? Is it worth making less money to do better in retirement? With her back-of-the-envelope calculations, she figured out, in fact, it was. It was hard for me, as you know. I did four podcasts about uncertainty and whether or not I should go for this job because I had been in my current job 15 years. I liked my current job, but I needed to do something radical in order to ensure that my retirement would be okay. And with her calculations, she helped me figure out and said, this new job is a no-brainer. It was such a relief to me because one, I wanted the job, but two, I didn't want to make a financial mistake that would affect everything for the rest of my life. So I have a huge debt of gratitude for Jill and for her producer, Mark, who helped me figure out what to do next. Then she also helped me in figuring out some other issues, too. Really appreciate it. I had wished a couple of things. Is that first I had read this book earlier, but again, this job came up in a hurry and I didn't have time. The other thing is, I think this book goes great with the previous book we talked about, Ask For It. I wish I would have done it in the other order because what this book is about dreaming a little bit of how to make your life better, but do it in a way that won't damage your financial life, that you can do it safely so that you can figure out if you can get your dreams or how you could get your dreams or when you could get your dreams by being smart about it. She says in this book that the pandemic just shook everything up. People wanted less stress, maybe a new job. Maybe they wanted to be closer or farther away from family. There's all these things that the pandemic did to us where we started thinking about very fundamental things in our lives. When she helps people, she is giving them an honest evaluation. I've seen people have some financial struggles, but want to buy a horse or a cabin. And if that doesn't quite work out, she's really good at giving advice about how maybe she could do something else. Or if you just did this for this many years, you'll get there. People worried also about their retirement and how they were going to make it work. But she said that it's important that we need to know that we have the resources to make our dreams come true so that we can have what we want in life, but do so in a very smart way. Again, I recommend her podcast and I recommend this book. But she said that there are ways of getting what we want in life without the sleepless nights, without risking everything that we have in our lives. It's a little bit different for me. I'm not married. I don't have kids. So when I risk something in my life, it only impacts me. A lot of times people have family and they have to think about what it's going to do to them. On the other side, I'm the only income I have. 
if things go badly for me, I don't have someone who's going to help me out either. So what can we do to take charge of our lives? So she comes up with a 10 rule plan where she's looking at what it is you're doing and what you're hoping to do and help you plan for it a little bit better. She said that you want to take a hard look at your finances. Is this something that's really possible? You know, if you wanted to buy a cabin or if you wanted to move to Italy or if you wanted to do something like quit and retire early, you're going to have to take a realistic look and not just jump. I see so many times where people try to do something that they really want. Maybe they quit their job. That was a pretty good job. And they actually kind of like the job, but they just feel, I have to do something else. Or they want to retire, but they won't take that next step into the better job. And so they don't have a realistic look at their lives. They're wishing for something to come true that it can't possibly come true. She also said that for her, when she did her big money reset, she's a financial advisor. She had a really great job, but she wanted to do her podcast. She wanted to do other things with finances and help people in different ways. Could she do that? She said that she had a pink journal and she was able to write everything down in the pink journal, figure out all the plans, the finances, look at the assets, and it helped her decide that she could do it. But she also did something really smart. She promised her partner that they had to make a certain amount of money by a certain time or she would give up on it. So there was some realism in her plan. And she knew what her money situation looked like. So she said that there were three ways that she could have looked at these scenarios. She could have taken the best thing. Well, I will go and I'll start a podcast and I'll make a bazillion dollars and it'll be sunshine and rainbows. You could take a look at the worst case scenario. You'd be poor, the whole thing falls apart. She loses all her jobs and her money and her significant other and everything goes kaput. Or the middle scenario where it's probably going to be a mix of both things. There'll be some good things and some bad things. So this is where she said that you can take that look at what's going on in your life and put it in those three scenarios. So that you also have to take a look at your liquid assets. You have to look at your debt and your credit cards, taxes. You know, if you decided to move to another state that has higher taxes or the taxes on whatever thing it is that you want to buy, this needs to be a very detailed look and a realistic look. If you're looking at a job change, are you looking for a promotion or a lateral change? In my case, I did a lateral change. I'm not getting a promotion. Maybe I could have, but instead I'm doing what I love doing, doing it for someone else and doing it in a way that's going to fix my retirement almost entirely. And that means a great deal to me. I'd love to you know, be able to retire and do these podcasts. I got a bunch of podcasts planned. I'd have more time. It would be exciting for me to do that. Or are you going to go to a lesser job? Maybe your job is very stressful. I know when I listen to her podcasts, a lot of people are doctors and lawyers and the pandemic just stressed them out. And so maybe they're not going to quit or retire entirely, but they want to take a job that pays less something that's easier on their brain and on their soul, can they reduce those things? And then when you're looking at your finances and looking at what's going on, you're also looking at your costs. Do you have the ability to reduce your costs? Do you have a way of spending less money? I mean, that's what I was going through. Can I reduce things out of my budget? And I did cut in some ways. Some of them were big deals. I'm a pet person. I love pets. I want to have 100 dogs. But, you know, pets are very expensive. So for the time being, no pets. I have a bird, but he doesn't eat much. Another thing comes with vacations. I'm going to do some cheaper vacations. I like to go camping. Let's just stick to the camping for a while. I have a basic budget, which I use, not in my pink notebook, but on my spreadsheets. And that helped me look at the finances to see where I could cut some things down. Again, you don't want to cut to the point where your life is not 
fun anymore. But there are certain ways, and I found a bunch of them, that I could cut things out without making it terrible. You know, she said that even sometimes it's someone just not getting coffee at five bucks a pop or eating out so much. And can you work with your relationship, you know, your spouse or your significant other to cut money out so that you're not spending on so many things? I remember at one point that there was a person who talked to a financial advisor, and I think her name was Jean Carpenter, and they wanted to go down to a single income. The woman wanted more time with her kids, and she wanted to be able to quit the job and just live on the single income. And one of the things in that show is they found out they were spending so much money on childcare, then they were both exhausted, so they were eating out and bringing food home all the time. You know, then they felt guilty about their kids, and so then they, you know, took them to Disney World all the time, cut back on that. They were able to go down to a single job just by doing a little bit of analysis of what they were spending money on. And then if you're looking at a job change or you want to shift out of a job, she said a good question to ask is, what would you feel like if you were to get fired? How would you feel about it? And that might help you see what you really feel about your job. If your job is stressful, you wish you were in a different industry. Doing that scenario that you actually walked into work the next day and got fired from it would help you understand exactly where you're trying to go. I think having strategies to help you figure out what it is you want is the most important thing because, again, you can't get your great money reset or your dreams that you want to come true if you don't know what they are. I remember a long time ago, Dr. Laura used to have this magic wand analogy that if you could wave a magic wand and solve whatever problem you're having right now, what would that solution look like? Obviously, no one believes in the magic wand, but if you had that thought about what a genie would do for you or a magic wand might help you get some clarity about what it is you're looking for. In order for you to get your dreams, you have to realize you have the power. And sometimes you have to look at what your next alternative is. If you want to quit your job, you're stressed out, the pandemic did you in, could you ask for more money? Could you ask to work less hours? I had a friend of mine who decided that she was going to go part-time in her job because she was working too many hours, but she was able then to negotiate to spend less time. And right now, employers are worried about losing people. So that kind of negotiation is better, is almost easier because they want us to stay. And if you don't ask, you won't get what you want. And that's why I thought the counterpart to this book is that book, Ask For It. Because this is about getting what you want and doing it in a way that helps you in the long run, getting your dreams. But if you can't get a raise or maybe you can't change jobs, could you do some other things through negotiation? And that's where I want to ask you to look back at the last podcast in the book, Ask For It. But can you change your leave time? Can you ask for a signing bonus? Can you ask for help on your child care or education. I mean, this is where Jill is telling us to think outside the box about what you want. The funny thing about it is I didn't see a way out of my own retirement problems. This job fell in my lap. One day I was in a meeting and they announced this job in the meeting I was, and I spent the rest of the day walking around my house going, what, what? Because I knew this was my way out and doing a job that I already do and that I already love. This was thinking outside the box. Originally, I was thinking about big promotions. I was thinking about, could I become a director somewhere? Could I go back into being a system administrator like I used to be? Instead, this was a third way where I got to do the thing I love doing and solve my retirement problems. But she said that when you negotiate, you should think about things in a range and have some flexibility. But again, if you don't ask your boss or the person who can help you get the thing you want, you're not going to get it. So you have to know what it is and then act on it. She said that there's ways that the tax system helps us and she goes into that. Taxes are really mind boggling to me. I think my next act is I'm going to have to read a book about how retirement and taxes works, but make smart moves, you know, and keep 
in charge of your emotions. Because if you get upset, you might say the wrong thing. But instead, this should be a logical, how can I get my dream through planning and thinking about this? With those smart moves, with a bit of planning, you can get what you're looking for. And then she said that there's some other things to think about. Could you start your own business? I started my own podcast business. And one of the things I thought about was, well, when I'm broke and in my retirement, maybe the podcast could bring me a little bit of money. The other thing is, is if you're thinking about going back to school, make sure that it makes sense. Are you going to go back to school and become something that maybe pays more or has better opportunities or better work-life balance or a better day? You have to think about whether or not the amount of money you would invest in going to school is worth whatever change you're trying to make. But not that it should go away, but just to think. Does it make sense in this particular case? She says in the end that our loved ones know us better than anyone, but they also have some secret wants. Your spouse might want you to work less. Your friend might want you to stay in town and not leave and go take a job on the other side of the country. Your family might not be excited that you decided to sell everything and move to Italy. So just keep in mind that either the people in your life who will help you and you're asking advice of, they have probably your best interests at heart, but they also have their own opinions. So sometimes getting your great money reset means saying no to your family or someone that you love. A lot of times money poisons our relationships with our family. And if they have a viewpoint that they might not have as much money, if you do X, Y, and Z, they might be against it. Family can be supportive, but sometimes they're thinking about their own lives too. So in the end, this book is helpful in so many ways. Again, I think this is a great counterpart for the book Ask For It. And these two books about dreaming your great money reset and then asking for the things you want is just the one-two knockout punch I think everybody needs in their lives so that they can finally get their dreams. Like I said, what I loved about Jill and I love about her podcast and this book is sometimes you get the idea with money people, work hard, nose to the grindstone, just focus on your retirement, make as much money as humanly possible, work as many hours as you possibly can, invest in this and that, and it's all very narrow-minded. And it avoids the great question in our life, can I get my dreams? And Jill is right there to put her hands on your back and say, you can. Let's think about this. So I recommend reading the book. I recommend listening to her podcast. And I recommend calling her with whatever financial questions you have. So my challenge to you is think about what it is you really want and what you want your money to do for you. Is there something, and maybe it's not today, but that you could get if your great money reset fantasy came true? Write it down and start making plans, analysis, about how you could get that dream come true. And if you don't know how to do it, you can call Jill and her podcast, and I'll put those links in the show note and ask her how you can get there. She saved my life. She put me on two paths that are going to allow me to have a new job, new opportunity, and to be able to retire in a way that'll not be forever down the road, but in a way that'll be successful. So thank you, Jill. I appreciate everything. Please remember that I am trying to build a podcast empire. And if you're interested in the other podcasts I have, you can look at thecuriousgals.com. The link will be in the show notes. But I have this podcast. I have a religious podcast. Also coming this year is going to be a nature podcast about just being curious and walking out your front door. You can use small steps if you like. And remember, getting your dreams with your money starts with small steps. 